In 2008, Hull City were promoted to the top flight of English football for the first time in their 104 year history. Not many people gave them much of a chance in the Premier League for their debut season, but what came next was a strange campaign full of surprises, controversy and iconic moments still remembered to this day. This is a story of Hull City's bizarre first season in the top flight. A Dean Windus volley in the 2008 Championship playoff final against Bristol City meant Hull would be playing top flight football for the first ever time in their history. Phil Brown's side were not expected to achieve much in their debut campaign, with many expecting the top flight novices to go straight back down. Hull's first ever Premier League fixture would take place on the 16th of August 2008 at home against Fulham. It did not start well, with Fulham taking the lead in the 8th minute. On the 22nd minute, however, a shot outside the box from new signing Giovanni levelled the scores, with the Brazilian making history by being the man to score Hull's first ever top flight goal. The game would remain even for a long time, but in the 81st minute, Caleb Folan slotted the ball in to put Hull in front. The game finished 2-1, and Hull had got their first top flight win on the first time of asking. Hull drew their next game with Blackburn, before a 5-0 loss at home to Wigan seemingly brought them back down to earth, but this turned out to be a blessing in disguise for the Tigers. They would win away at Newcastle, and although they gave away a two-goal lead at home to Everton, they still held the Toffees to a draw. Their first truly tough test would come against Arsenal. Hull would travel to the Emirates to face a team amongst the favourites for the title. Arsenal went in front early in the first half, when a Cesc Fabregas shot was deflected in off Paul McShane. However, 11 minutes later, a trademark long shot from Giovanni would level the scores. Only 4 minutes later, Daniel Kuzan would head in to put Hull ahead. Arsenal had great chances to level the game, but they couldn't make them count. Hull left the Emirates with a historic 2-1 victory. The win inspired Hull to continue their great run of form. They returned to North London to face Tottenham Hotspur, and another goal from Giovanni saw them complete a North London double, coming home from White Hart Lane with three points as well. A Michael Turner goal took Hull to a 1-0 win over West Ham, and goals from Camille Zayate, Giovanni and Marlon King sealed a 3-0 win over West Brom that left the Tigers in third place in the league, only behind first place on goal difference. Hull would be up against league leaders Chelsea next. It was a chance for Hull to truly announce themselves to the Premier League and even put them amongst the title race. But sadly, there was no fairy tale this time. Goals from Frank Lampard, Nicholas Anelka and Florent Malouda saw Chelsea emerge as 3-1 winners. Hull would travel to Old Trafford next and fought valiantly, scoring three goals, but Manchester United scored four and Hull would lose a second consecutive game. A 1-0 loss at Bolton followed, and Hull's great start to the season seemed to be derailed. They would slightly recover though, with a five-game unbeaten run following, with four draws and a win, including a 2-2 draw at Anfield. Although this time, the cracks started to show in the Hull contingent, with Dean Windus and Marlon King allegedly getting to a fight with each other in a casino that reportedly resulted in King headbutting Windus. Their season soon started to crumble again. A 4-1 defeat at home to Sunderland ended their unbeaten run, and next up was a trip to the blue side of Manchester on Boxing Day. Hull endured a nightmare first half, with braces from Caicedo and Rubinho putting their opponents 4-0 ahead. As the half-time whistle went, Phil Brown stormed onto the pitch. Whilst the Hull players were headed for the dressing room, Phil Brown demanded that they follow him. Brown took his players over to the travelling fans and demanded they sit down in a circle in front of them. Brown then ripped into his players in full view of the TV cameras and supporters, shouting at them and pointing his finger in their faces for two minutes straight. The players slowly got up and prepared for the second half. Both sides would score once in the second period, with Hull eventually losing the game 5-1. It was a strange incident that still lives in Premier League legend to this day, and whilst Brown's actions were a gamble, they didn't seem to pay off at all. Hull would lose their next four games, making it seven losses in a row. Their next win would not come until March, with a late goal from Minucho sealing what was now a rare win. Their disastrous form continued, and five losses in a row put them in a desperately poor position if they wanted to retain their top flight status. 
A vital point away at Bolton meant that Hull would go into the final day one point ahead of the relegation zone. West Brom, Middlesbrough and Newcastle could all stay up if they were to overtake Hull, and Hull didn't exactly have an easy task on the final day. Hull would be hosting Manchester United. The Red Devils had just sealed their third successive league title, and whilst they would be resting some of their key players, it would not be an easy game for Hull. Hull went into the game knowing that if they won, the other team's results would be irrelevant. An incredible goal from Darren Gibson in the 24th minute put Manchester United ahead. Hull were in trouble. If they lost, their fate would be out of their hands. Hull fought, but they could not find a goal. The game finished 1-0 to Manchester United. Hull had to rely on other results. But it appeared that the sun was shining on the Tigers. Newcastle lost to Aston Villa, Middlesbrough lost to West Ham, and West Brom lost to Liverpool. In a truly bizarre turn of fate, one of the most dramatic relegation battles in Premier League history ended with all of the sides involved losing their games. The news filtered through to Hull, and they gleefully celebrated. Hull had avoided relegation in their first season in the top flight. Whilst their form had tailed off dramatically, their incredible run at the start of the season would prove to be what kept them up. As a man whose ego had grown dramatically throughout the season, Phil Brown decided to take centre stage once again. Phil Brown grabbed a microphone and walked onto a pitch. He then began to sing, We Are Staying Up and Don't Want To Go Home, as the crowd joined in. It was an odd way to end the season, considering the Tigers had only won one game after Christmas, and they had only stayed up because of other teams' results, but Hull were unable to push on in the next campaign. Phil Brown was relieved of his duties in March next season, and amidst issues behind the scenes, they would be relegated back to the Championship. Hull have returned to the Premier League since, but their fortunes in the division remain poor, but with how long it took them to reach the top flight, Hull fans back then would have been delighted to have the amount of time in the top flight they have experienced. Hull's first season in the top flight of English football may have been strange and full of twists and turns, but it was able to produce moments that are still iconic parts of Premier League history, whether for the right or wrong reasons. And whilst their form plummeted in the second half of the campaign, for a little while, the Tigers were able to dream, and nobody can take that away from them. <laughs>